right. So, my time is probably up. <laughs> uh, that's my introduction there. So, uh, I'm going to read three poems. Uh, the first one that I'm going to read is actually an older poem of mine that I, I hadn't shared. It's really, it's really short, but I was taken back to um, where I was at the time and where I'm at now and all the things that are happening now and um, still relevant. <clears throat> I'm your Donna Autumn. I am Donna Autumn and I have always been free. Not by a gun or the taking of the freedoms of others, but by the pure survival of my people. My freedom has always been good, natural, and what I choose it to be. Not by the waving of a flag or a pledge, not by borders or not by a vote. I know my freedom is hard kept, not earned, by many generations beautiful. My freedom is kept safe in my heart and in my mind and in the culture I was born into. I am free because my mama told me so. <laughs> I'm free every day and every way the same. So, just wanted to say that. <clears throat> and uh, this next one, I... Uh, I was really glad to hear language in here, you know, different different languages. And um, the song is about a young man at our school who um, is a fluent speaker of, of autumn, autumn language. I'm not even fluent, like I'm still learning. Um, but this young man, he's, he's fluent. And uh, I have uh, conversations with him and, you know, thinking about him and his experience. I don't feel good, he said, because I have no one to talk to in autumn. Alone, he walks the sidewalks of our school with the tongue that moves and shh and thus and and yes. And a mind that first sees beyond the layers of time, and a mind that remembers dusty roads he drives for miles without seeing anyone or any structure. E, shop guy, she says to me every day, every time he walks by my classroom door. E, I say, Satam, Atam, Muri, Muri, which means uh, hurry up, run, run to class. <laughs> and laugh as his steps quicken, his dress shoes tapping down the halls he can't talk to. His parents, born in Mexico, born south of the line, they drew on our jewel, raised him only in the shh and this. Where rurus and no electricity with weekly trips across the border for a week's worth of water. But did I mention he dresses in a suit and tie every day? Hair slicked back and a backpack on his side, a walking contradiction, they say. If he looks American, maybe they'll talk to him. He doesn't know that every time his mouth opens, he scares them. He reminds them that their tongues are in chains. Of, um, there's a line by Ophelia Zepeda, she's a Thanatham poet. Um, she says that for some people, language is like a lock, and some people continually pick at it. Uh, this last poem that I'm going to share is uh, Who knows about um, the Standing Rock Sioux tribe and their fight to stop the pipeline? Okay. Well, it's not just their fight, it's our fight. Especially for us, or the new generation, who see these things that we need to do. Who are tired of dirty air, dirty water, and just, you know, being scared for our, our future. So, <clears throat> if, you, if you don't know, I'm just going to take this moment to share that um, 
Basically, the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe has been having a protest to stop an oil pipeline that's been, you know, trying to go through their community. And the most devastating thing was that this pipeline was going to be, was going to go under um, the river, the Cannonball River, that, that, you know, is their source of drinking water. Water is sacred. Water is, is we are made of water. And, you know, we've, we've always understood that. And so for them, you know, they've seen all these things that have been happening around the world and they knew that they couldn't let it happen there. And so, uh, for the past couple of months, um, they've, been, they've been standing their ground. Uh, they haven't let the, uh, the bulldozers um, cut through the land. And if it has and when it did, um, they found uh, their ancestors. And so, how would we feel if we saw the bones of our ancestors, of our families, being unearthed before our eyes, right? So, <clears throat> because of that, they, they took a stand. Um, if you haven't followed, the government has been doing some crazy-ish, you know? And I cry, I cry every time I, I, I see a story and I see pictures. But on the flip side, the beautiful thing is that for the first time in decades, Native peoples have been gathering like, like never before and truly, truly, truly asking for the world to hear us, asking for the United States of America to hear us and to hear all of the things that we've been going through since, you know, 1491 or whoever. <laughs> and, um, you know, the effects are real. The effects are real. You know, even generations later, I see that in my classroom every day. The effects are real. It's not just physically what we see around us, it's what we feel in our heart. Blood memory. So, <clears throat> check it out if you don't know. So, um, this is to Standing Rock. I felt when you, I felt when you took your first breath, the moment they lit the first prayer fire. I knew you were breathing every time the glow grew brighter from the bundles of sweet grass, sage, and sugar. Crickets sang among prairie grasses, their instruments simply the water flowing over rocks and the wind soprano through the hills. I felt you rise when tears fell. A love you thought was forgotten woke you. Brushing leaves off your earthen dress, smoothing your hair, plaiting braids for a battle, plaiting them for ceremony. I felt your heart race as you heard the rumbles drawing closer, flinching as deep cuts were carved along your belly, not quite drawing blood. You got to your knees and held out your hands while a hundred tribes held up your arms and lifted you to your feet. And your first step was a dance. <clears throat> your first step was a dance because you've been wanting to dance since you heard the first drum. You're dancing now, stepping in time with the hundreds and soon thousands who remember your song. They have, been, they have given you back your feathers, and with each wave, you slap the snake down. You slap it to the ground and slap it, rendering it helpless and weak. Look at you now. Fires, grown, fires burn constantly. Love is given with each sunrise and sunset, and relatives <clears throat> Relatives arrived to bless your feet with song and medicine. Look at you now, a giant they thought was defeated in 1491, but your descendants believed. We've waited, fought the small battles, survived their small attempts at genocide and their small visions. We waited for you, mama. We've always knew you were still breathing. Yeah. the Tucson Youth Poetry Slam and yes! all the hard work that you do. I'm always amazed and every time I'm around you guys, every time I'm around your energy, I, I'm inspired and I cry and I, and I feel your words right here in my ebook deck, in my heart. So I want to give you all of that strength and know that 
um, you are helping to build vision for other communities, um, especially for my community. And so I hope to see you down at Bobby Kirby High School pretty soon. All right, you guys have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Amy Kwan. All right, y'all, here's what we're